XP Nuggets, Enhancing Storage Networking with Virtualization. So let's get right in. And remember how this works, if you've never attended one of our webinars before, there is a chat panel. You can see that there. And feel free to chat in your questions at any time. I keep one of my two eyes on that chat panel as we go along here. And it would be great for me to bring up questions as you ask them. So please feel free to do that. At the end, we'll set aside some time to just do Q&A like we always like to do with you. But I just wanted to impress upon you, ask your questions as you have them. So virtualization, let's start there. We hear about it so much today, and we got a request for this webinar subject, I'm sure many requests on this subject, because you hear about virtualization in many aspects of computing today, but is it something that's going to assist us in the complex world of storage, IT storage as well? And as we'll see in this webinar, it is going to do so dramatically. But I wanted to start out just with my very simple definition of virtualization. And what I think of every time I hear this is simply something that is going to allow us to take something physical and abstract it into something logical. Think about a network switch, for instance, where everybody is connecting to the network. We can take three of those ports, or four like I just circled, and we can create, what do we do? We create what's called a virtual local area network. And we segment those four ports into a VLAN in the world of networking. This is so common, my 14-year-old daughter could accurately describe what a VLAN is, and she is not in the information technology field. So this is taking something physical, that network switch, and doing something logical with it, a VLAN. And that logical thing really dictates how things work, right? The broadcasts in this case are constrained to that VLAN. So it is changing the behavior of the physical device very profoundly and adding this logical layer on top of it. So you start thinking about virtualization, and you start realizing, first of all, that sure, it's the rage today, and it seems to be all that we want to talk about. But you start realizing, wait a minute, we've been doing this forever. Like as long as you and I have been in IT, we've been virtualizing. Back in the early mainframe days, you would have this huge mainframe, and they would segment that mainframe internally in software so that it actually represented multiple physical devices for teams to work on. That was virtualization, taking that huge physical mainframe and segmenting it. So it, this is nothing new by any stretch. It's just that we're taking virtualization farther than ever before, and that's why it's all anyone wants to hear about. I like to simplify our world of information technology with this simple three-pronged solution, and that is there are compute resources out there, there are networking resources out there, and there are storage resources out there. And when you think about virtualization, you realize that it is permeating all of these areas. You think about compute, and you realize that many people consider virtualization to mean these days they're running the uh, Windows operating system, for example, on their Mac. Oh yeah, check out my shiny new Mac. It runs Windows and it runs the Mac. It's the best thing ever. That may be someone's desktop virtualization world. That's what they think of when they think of virtualization. You may talk to someone in our industry and they'll tell you that, oh, virtualization? Yeah, you mean vSphere and vCenter and VMware and ESXi and all those great VMware technologies? or maybe it's Microsoft's Hyper-V, or Citrix's excellent virtualization solutions. And that's, they're talking about the virtualization of server technologies in data centers today. 
You talk to someone else in the networking space, and they'll talk to you about VLANs, and they'll talk to you about software-defined networking, where we take the physical device, we cleave out the data plane from the control plane, and then we have software that will make the control plane function across all of the devices. So with a couple clicks of a couple buttons, we can provision network resources, reprovision network resources, etc. Well, guess what? In the area of storage, we have been virtualizing for, for as long as I've been in this space. In fact, now that I think about it, for as long as I've been alive. When we store data, we are interested in virtualizing it. Now why we hear so much about it today is because we are taking it farther than we ever have before. Think about virtualization. Remember, the logical made from the physical, and you realize that when it comes to storage, we can have a hard drive, and for years we've been going to our hard drive and we've been partitioning the hard drive and then creating logical volumes out of these partitions. Well, that is clearly virtualization in storage. Specifically, what we're doing there is something called host-based virtualization, as I'll get into with you in a moment. But it occurred to me, before I show you the various ways that you may be interacting with storage virtualization today, it occurred to me we really should cover why this is the rage that it is. Why is everyone pushing to virtualization solutions in all areas of their organization today when it comes to IT, compute, networking, storage, and all aspects of those, it seems like everyone wants to do virtualization. Well, in the specific case of storage virtualization, it goes hand in hand with a huge area that I alluded to, and that's server virtualization. No one, it seems like, wants to build traditional server farms anymore. They want to have these very efficient blade servers. They want to have a virtualization solution on top of those blade servers, like VMware would be a classic example. And then they want to run virtualized servers. Well, if our storage infrastructure is heavily virtualized, it's a perfect marriage with that heavy dose of server virtualization. The other great news is HA. Anytime in our industry we see capital HA, it typically is a reference to high availability. You want a workload, a server workload, to be able to be transported from one blade server to another, and you need its access to storage to be seamless. And if the storage is heavily virtualized, that is a possibility, and so we have incredible high availability. Another great thing, of course, would be involving multiple data centers. And this gets into disaster recovery as part of the high availability solution. You have the data that the user here needs in X. There is another data center Y. And it is very easy, relatively easy, in a virtualized environment to move that data that's needed to another data center location based on something like fire or flood or earthquake or what have you. Most people would say, though, the most exciting thing about virtualization in storage today is the ease of administration and the automation. Some user is consuming way beyond their limits of storage that you provision for them. You receive an alert that they are approaching their quota of storage. You then send them an email. Why are you close to storage? You know, what, what's going on? What do you need additional storage for? They respond with one click of a button. You automatically provision additional storage for them. And that level of automation and ease of which you do all that is, uh, has a lot to do with the virtualization ingredient. Keep in mind there may be environments where you don't even have to get involved. Okay? Maybe for yourself. 
You need to provision as much storage as you possibly need. When you reach your quota, there's an automatic policy that gives you more storage. Something else companies are looking to do more and more is consolidate. They are building these big, beautiful data centers, and they want to get as much data into those perfectly crafted spaces as possible. Something else that's super exciting that we're seeing more and more in storage environments is tiering. And virtualization can help us with this dramatically. There's stuff that hardly ever needs to be accessed, like archive type stuff. Then there's middle of the road stuff that needs to be accessed some of the time. And then there is this just absolute imperative operational data that needs to be accessed all the time. Companies like EMC and the giants like NetApp, they're in the business of developing solutions that can help you tier your data in data centers. Optimize what needs to be accessed frequently and not worry about as much optimization for the data that doesn't need to be accessed as frequently. You think about our two main storage technologies today, the mechanical disk, and you contrast this to SSD, solid state disk technology, and you realize, oh my goodness, this is perfect for the tiering structure because we can use SSD for the top tier and we could use mechanical storage or tape for the bottom tier. So this is super, super exciting. And then data protection. And Giovanni just typed in, okay, well, what about keeping the data secured? And what's interesting about that is you actually can build in a more robust control set when you engage in virtualization. Now, here's the problem. The complexity increases. So you have to have network engineers that are thoroughly trained in that complexity. But many oftentimes, the more we virtualize, the more we are able to protect. That means secure the data. Yes, we're able to add metadata, for instance, that we can easily deal with that secures that information. So this isn't a freebie. <laughs> Oftentimes, heavily virtualized solutions are going to cost us money. They're going to cost us the time it takes to become expertise in these areas, but the list of advantages goes on and on. These advantages that I mentioned are just some. So when we virtualize in the storage world, what do we end up virtualizing? Well, in the world of direct attached storage or storage area networking, we end up taking a block of information and we end up virtualizing its location. In the world of storage, we can take files and entire file systems like we would see in network attached storage so frequently, and we virtualize their existence and their location. In the world of tape, it might be a single tape that is virtualized for storage, or a tape drive, or an entire tape library. And more and more today, we are taking disk representations. What the user thinks as you know, thinks of as their disk, and we are virtualizing that. So what we virtualize in the storage world runs the gamut from files to blocks of data representations, and even something I'll talk about a little later on, and that is really exciting, objects. Taking data and storing it in an object-based representation instead of a block or a file record. Now, we know why we want to virtualize so much. We know in a storage world what we're ending up virtualizing. Where do we implement it in the storage world? And there are a lot of places it's implemented today. There are more and more technologies that allow us to do host-based virtualization the device 
that is connected to the storage can engage in the virtualization. I'll show you an example of that technology in a moment. There's server-based solutions, of course. Microsoft is an example. In their server operating systems, they keep developing new and improved storage application programming interfaces that makes it very simple to deal with storage. There's network-based storage virtualization solutions. There's storage devices themselves now that implement the virtualization. There's even subsystems within storage that implement this level of virtualization. So it is on every conceivable level in the devices that participate with storage where the virtualization might occur. And now that we know why we would virtualize storage and what we would virtualize and where we would virtualize it, how do we do it? Well, there's lots of different virtualization solutions, and I wanted to cover a couple with you in this webinar, but understand there are two main categories of approaches that we can generalize on. There is in-band virtualization, and there's out-of-band virtualization. What does this mean? If we do the virtualization in-band, it means any communications that need to do with the virtualization are sent right along with the data that's stored itself. Out-of-band virtualization solutions will send the data across one channel, and they will send anything involving the virtualization, any chatter, any exchange of bits that have to do with the virtualization working correctly, they will do that out-of-band. So those are the two generalized approaches to how virtualization is done. And by the way, we could apply this to other disciplines, not just storage. So now, let me take you on a tour of some technologies that we have in storage today that would be great examples of the power of virtualization. And this reminds us of the power of your CBT Nuggets subscription. Because one of the incredible things about your CBT Nuggets subscription is your ability to go and find whatever it is in a discipline that you're interested in learning more about. So you don't have to watch an entire course. With our videos organized as standalone nuggets as well, you can go and watch those nuggets that might pique your interest. For instance, what's going on in the Windows world? And of course, we're talking about host-based stor uh, storage virtualization right now. Well, in the Windows world, we have what are called storage spaces. Oh, you've got to love this, right? Nice, simple language for the simple Windows user. And that was not an insult. I'm just talking about an end user that knows absolutely nothing about RAID and technology like that. They just know they have a lot of stuff they want to store, and they need a space to store it in. So Windows 8, Windows 10 server technologies introduced storage spaces for them. They go and they add disks. They can plug in external drives. They can see their internal drives. They plug all this stuff in. The stuff shows up to them as physical devices, and they can create a storage space with it. Perfect example of host-based storage virtualization. They can do RAID 0, where they are just basically taking all this storage, making it available to themselves as one big pool. And that's what most Windows users would want to do. They would say, all right, look, I'm going to give you five drives. Just give me one big, easy-to-manage pool of storage. Thank you very much. So they'd be getting a RAID 0 there. Or they can set up RAID 1. The storage spaces can be set up so that they mirror. Or they can go for RAID 5. It's not called RAID 0, RAID 1, or RAID 5. That would confuse the user. It's just what they end up getting the equivalent of. Now, 
This is an example of host-based virtualization that we have in storage today with Windows technology. What is Cisco doing as one of the giants in the networking plumbing that it comes to when it comes to storage infrastructures? Well, they're doing a little virtualization technology called the Unified Fabric. The Unified Fabric is referring to really 10 gigabit per second Ethernet. That's what we're talking about. 10 gigabit per second Ethernet that will allow fiber channel over Ethernet technology as an example. So you've got this SAN down here requiring fiber channel. You've got a NAS looking for Ethernet. And you marry these technologies together over the cable. You've obviously got plenty of LANs that need to connect. So you're taking the local area network traffic, you're taking the storage area network traffic, the network attached storage traffic, and you're sending it all over a 10 gigabit per second Ethernet unified fabric. On servers, you no longer need to provision a converged network adapter for the fiber channel stuff, and a, uh, excuse me, a host bus adapter. I just gave away the joke there. You no longer have to provision a host bus adapter for the fiber channel and a NIC for the LAN. Instead, you get rid of these two entities and you provision a converged network adapter that can speak both the LAN traffic and the SAN traffic seamlessly. What about storage device virtualization? Well, in a NetApp world, as an example, and I apologize to the NetApp folks, uh, it looks like uh, PowerPoint converted the appropriate capitalization without me knowing it. But anyways, uh, with NetApp, we have what are called flex vols now. This is so amazingly cool. So in NetApp, you have this device, an appliance, a FAS, it's called Fabric Attached Storage. And what it has inside it, of course, is many, many disk drives, hot swappable disk drives. And you group those together in what's called an aggregate. OK, great. Then you come into that aggregate, and you literally say, OK, this is a volume, a flexible volume for network attached storage. Or no, I've decided this is going to be used in our SAN. So right off the bat, you see the flexibility of this. We can deploy it for either the NAS or the SAN environment. From a size perspective, you can set a size, and then later on you can expand or shrink that size in a very flexible manner. And with one click of the mouse, you can deem whether this storage is thin provisioned or thick provisioned. So these are the type virtualization technologies that are just taking the storage world by storm because this is so incredibly simple and flexible for the storage administrator to set up to provision different aggregates for different flex vols that are needed inside the organization. A super exciting aspect of virtualization and storage now is object-based. And this is hugely popular. Why? Because so much of the data that we want to store today is unstructured. You know, it used to be everything we wanted to store was tucked into a nice database format. You know, everyone's like, oh, yeah, structured query language and Oracle and SQL Server and all this stuff, all the data is nicely structured into some type of volume that makes sense, into some type of a file structure. There's indexing done. There's all this great structuring done so the data can be stored to and read very efficiently. But these days, so much of the data that we want to store is completely unstructured. It's a photograph. It's an email. 
It's a song or WAV file. It's a video file. We want to store everything digitally now. A ton of the information we want to store is unstructured, and we want to be able to interpret this data, social media tweets and all that kind of stuff. We want to not only be able to store it, but we want to run big data algorithms against it to glean information from it that could be very valuable. So it turns out that storing things not at the block level, not at the file level, but at a simple object level can be extremely powerful in heavily virtualized storage environments for us today. Everything that I've shared with you today and more, a lot more, is available in your CBT Nugget catalog. So let me, let me uh, oh, and by the way, this is my blog where I blog about all these subjects, so be sure to check that out as well. But let me just quickly prove this to you with a quick demonstration here. I'll share my Microsoft Edge browser. We'll see how this works. All right, great. It appears to be working. And we're going to CBT Nuggets, of course. And we don't even have to sign in. You don't even have to sign in to see this. If I click this magnifying glass and I say, I want to learn storage, you'll see that we have an EMC slanted course, a NetApp slanted course, a Google Cloud slanted course, and a very vendor neutral generic storage course. If we just turn to the EMC one here quickly and we look at the 40 key nuggets make it up, you'll see there's one on object-centric devices or object-based storage, unified storage, and concepts in action. You'll see there's nuggets on fiber channel over Ethernet, fiber channel SAN. Many of the things we've alluded to today are covered fully in that course. And you don't need to go through the whole thing, as uh, I alluded to. And darn it, I guess that demo did not work for some of our users. Uh, sorry about that. All I'm demoing right there is the CBT Nuggets website. And let me just draw it for you. So we've got CBT Nuggets. And over here, you'll see a magnifying glass. Okay? So when you go to the CBT Nuggets homepage, look for that magnifying glass in the top right. And when you uh, click it, I did a simple search on word storage. And we saw courses slanted towards NetApp, EMC, vendor neutral like CompTIA. And you will see from the Nugget titles that in the NetApp course, there's one on FlexVault. Check it out after this webinar today. If you go to the Windows courses, there's a storage space Nugget. If you go to any of the Cisco courses that I've created lately, there will be a unified fabric. So there are nuggets with these titles waiting to give you the answers that you seek. By the way, if you want to keep in touch with me via my blog, Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, Google+, those are your options. And we will open it up for your questions right now. What questions do you have? Are you intrigued by the levels of virtualization that we have in storage area environments today. And like I said, what's amazing is not only do we have this heavy dose of virtualization, but realize just like we're seeing in the world of networking, it can be done at all levels like I alluded to. You have the local client virtualizing. You have the appliance virtualizing. You have the network plumbing virtualized. You have the storage array virtualized. You have the storage inside the storage array virtualized. And it's just something that we absolutely have to keep up with. You don't want to you, – you definitely want to move with the industry. Now, don't panic. For instance – and we have no questions, so I'll, I'll leave with this aside um, – in my main industry, uh, 
which is I just call networking, right? Most of what I do at CBT Nuggets is to teach networking. I teach a lot of storage, but networking is still the number one subject. In the subject of networking, virtualization leads to SDN. There has been more panic about those three letters than anything I've ever seen in my industry. People are in a panic right now. They're in a panic because they're afraid this will put them out of a networking job. But what they don't understand is the move to software-defined networking has been going on already for decades. And it's not like the whole world is going to be software-defined networking tomorrow, that this will be a gradual migration, that we won't be let go from our jobs tomorrow because of SDN. We have a chance right now to gradually keep up with those gradual changes. And that's why I'm so proud to be a CBT Nuggets instructor where there's a team of us constantly creating the cutting edge training that is going to keep you up to speed. Well, that's our time for today. Uh, Natalie is going to come on and give us a few reminders. I just want to thank everyone, as I'm sure she will, for your attendance and your participation today.